Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 640 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with the Greg Ware. I got to tell you why I said the Greg Ware, because there's a whole bunch of Greg Wares out there, but this is the Greg Ware. So you want to check him out. He's a certified financial planner, and he's got great information, whether you're just starting out or you're ready to retire. So we'll bring him on in a minute. Now, a quick update on our program to get scholarships for persons with disabilities. Now, uh, one of the persons has uh, that's blind has already started a website to help other people with disabilities. Another lady is totally blind, and she's revamping her husband's construction website. <laughs> Boy, these people are really inspirational. And, and a third, who's a school teacher, is moving right along with her studies uh, because she uh, school is out. So she's doing great, too. So, so we'd love to have your help with this program. We're going to get these people either hired or in their own business or both. So check it out at screwthecommute.com slash disability, and you can click over to the GoFundMe campaign. Anything you can throw in is well appreciated. It helps out. And, uh, hey, if you're really flush with cash, you could uh, you could sponsor a person yourself. How about that? Boy, it's something you'd really be proud of. So I know I am uh, being involved in it. All right, pick up a copy of our automation ebook at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. I want you working with customers and prospects and developing products and services and doing stuff you like instead of fighting with your computer all day long. Well, we figured it out a couple years ago. I'm, I'm going to update the figures now. Uh, this Just one of the tips in the book has saved me about 8 million keystrokes. All right, saved me carpal tunnel sy syndrome. So you can really... Uh, save a lot of time by taking a couple days and putting in these either free or super cheap techniques that I've been using for years and years and years. So check it out. And also pick up a copy of, and you, oh, I'll just say that again. You get it at screwthecommute.com slash automate free is where you pick up that ebook. And then screwthecommute.com slash app, that's A-P-P, -P, is where you get our podcast app where you can uh, put us on your cell phone and tablet and take us with you on the road. All right, let's get to the main event. Gregory Ware, I'm going to say the Gregory Ware, is a CFP. It's a Certified Financial Professional or Planner. I'm not sure which it is. And the author of Are You Compatible? And The Keys to Retirement. Pro prolific writer and great uh, financial person. Uh, he is a Morehouse graduate and has a master's degree in family financial planning and counseling. And Greg is renowned for making uh, complex financial concepts easy to understand and implement for his audience. So, Greg, are you ready to screw the commute? Yes, Tom. I'm here. <laughs> I, I appreciate that warm welcome, and I, I'm definitely ready to screw the commute. That's great. And uh, and uh, I noticed that recently you and your lovely family were on the cover of a magazine. Wow. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're the, hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. For, I'll take that as a compliment from you, Tom. <laughs> but uh, it was a fantastic experience uh, to be on a family, uh, to have a family on the cover of a magazine. Um, the community look, you know, looked at us and said, "Hey, you're somebody who's a good citizen. Um, you represent what we're trying to um, build in this community, and we would love for you and your family to um, be on the cover of the magazine and also, you know, have some articles inside." So it was, it was a great experience. What, what was the magazine? Uh, it was, it was a community, a region of Charlotte um, called Mountain Island, um, where they will have. Um, individuals for the community who have small businesses or who are represent, you know, the values of the community, they'll ask them to um, be on the cover or, you know, and also um, say some inspirational words and tell a little about their family, but inside of the magazine. As beautiful, well. beautiful. That's why I say you're the Gregory Ware. Nobody else has been on Charlotte's magazine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, all right, so now you haven't uh, always, I don't know if you've always been a financial planner, but uh, uh, you actually had, you know, and I kind of get sick when I say this word, you know, on this podcast, but you actually had jobs or a job. Uh, so how did you get started out? 
Yeah, I, um, my very first job um, was in a retail bank. Um, spent three, three and a half years. I started in college. Um, and it's in a retail bank. And, um, you know, it's very, it was a very interesting job. And this is really how I got started out in wanting to be a financial planner. Um, it was in a lower income community and I was in college and people would come in and I would help them with their finances. And um, what I noticed was a trend that people would continually overdraw their financial accounts or bank accounts and say, hey, Mr. Ware, can, can you waive our overdraft fees? And I was like, what is going on here? Uh, but, you know, over time, getting to know these individuals, you know, I, I got an opportunity to ask them questions and I would say, you know, how did, you know, how, how did you get here? And they would say, hey, nobody ever taught me. Um, and I knew that didn't make sense to me, Tom. You know, I was in college at right. the time and, and I had more money in my account than people who had worked 30 and 40 years. Oh, geez, yeah. And, and, and you know, yeah. and I knew there was a problem there. And that's really kind of got how I got started on this journey of, of helping people with finances. So uh, that was the only job you had or uh, you had, did you have other jobs? No, I um, had some other jobs too. So I was, um, I've been fortunate to work for three financial one or three fortune 100 financial service companies. Um, so from retail banking um, to being a financial advisor, uh, I've been a um, wholesaler and a product manager, I actually was a product manager of a brokerage firm. So I run my own little business there with a PL and l and um, worrying about vendor contracts and everything else. But um so um, over a couple of decades, I've been able to, um, you know, work in corporate America and, and do those things. All right. So when you said uh, you had your own little business, was you had a little business inside the big business? Is that what it was? It, it was, you know, the my little business inside of the big business. Uh, we had our own P&L. We had vendor contracts. We had to do our own marketing, uh, come up with those strategies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tell people what P&L means. A profit and loss. Yeah. <laughs> we want if the you, P more than the L, if you can help us with that. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but still, that wasn't totally on your own. So when did you start your own business and did you save up and how did you make the transition? Did you just quit cold turkey, some big company and start or how did you do it? Yeah. So, um, you know, but being a financial um, guy, um, I've done, you know, things I teach others, I've done myself, right? Mm -hmm. I've saved, I've invested in, uh, um, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? So I had saved up money and then, you know, an opportunity came um, where the company was going through some realignments and they said, hey, would you like to take over this area and move here? Or uh, would you want to go to parachute? And I said, well, tell them what you know, that is, tell them what that is. That's really where you can get a, a payout. It's all, it's a package. Um, and they were offering me a very good package. You know, they said, we would love for you to stay, but we respect that you, if you want to do something different in your life. And I said, well, you know, I've been wanting to go help people with their personal finances. I had a book that I've written and I wanted to release it. And uh, for compliance reasons, they wouldn't let me release the book. They said, hey, you know, you help our clients with their finances. You know, we can't let you write your own book and help others. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there that, that was, that was a conflict. So of they're interest nice up, up to a point. <laughs> they're, they're nice up to a point. Yeah. So, um, you know, that package, uh, you know, for me, plus what I already had, you know, saved and I was in a good spot financially. Were you married at the time? I was um, mm -hmm. married. At a, and uh, if you've seen the cover that uh, what you did, Tom, uh, married and got three you know, wonderful, beautiful children. That you had um, them so, yeah. at the time that this happened? I did. Yeah, okay. uh, so had uh, had three children, had the, uh, had the wife. Um, and, you know, transitioning from a job, a J-O-B, to, you know, being your own boss uh, can be scary if you're not in um, a good space financially and you don't have the support you need. So Did you discuss um, it with your wife? Did you make a joint decision on this? We did. Um, you know, we talked about it and um, she supported it. Um, and we were in a, in a situation, you know, a situation where we could make it happen financially. Um, so she was on board. The family was on board. Um, they actually were excited about it that um, dad would get the opportunity to be home a little more. Yay. So, yeah, they can come bug me in my home office. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> 
I noticed you had you locked the door before we started this interview. <laughs> so. it's, it's a it's a lesson learned, Tom. You know, I've done this a couple of times, <laughs> and sometimes the door just happens to swing open when I'm in a meet of a, middle of a meeting yeah. or you know talking with someone. I saw a guy on the BBC where his little kid wandered in, and he's on this big thing in front of 15 million people, <laughs> and, then, and then the nanny runs in, and the dog runs in. <laughs> He just keeps going. <laughs> All right, so let's get into uh, s- some tips. Let's let's start with the younger people, and then we'll talk about uh, people maybe thinking about retiring. So, what what kind of, you know, you wrote a book called uh, what's it called? Um, Are you compatible? Are you compatible? Yeah, I can't. You know, it's it's like a premarital uh, finance book. What are some of the things that couples, the mistakes that they make that you you, you save them from when you uh, when they read this book and when they work with you? Well, the, the book itself is um, really, you need to have conversations prior to getting married, right? You know, everybody thinks about the wedding and the honeymoon. And, um, you know, if you don't do it correctly, you could be have to worry about the divorce that comes afterwards. So <laughs> that's, my, that's my favorite, one of my favorite jokes. Marriage is grand, but divorce is 200 grand. <laughs> 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 exactly. So, you know, I uh, this book is uh, written in just preparation for, you know, young people or anyone who's getting married to say, hey, here are the financial conversations you need to have, right? Um, when does this you, happen? Do you, or when, when do you suggest that this happens? Before you get engaged or after you get engaged and then you decide you're incompatible and you got to take the ring back? Or what, I mean, what's the, what's the best time to do this, this conversation? You know, I think if, you know, if you are in a serious relationship and you, you you think it's heading that way, right, I think you need to do your due diligence and say, okay, let's have some serious conversations. Um, you know, are we on the same page financially? Um, you know, not necessarily, and it doesn't mean that, you know, if your credit is bad and mine is great or vice versa, we shouldn't get married, but it, it needs to be that we have the same expectations, right, you know, is, is, you know, my expectation is my expectation that both of us are going to work and your expectation is as soon as you get hit, you're going to stay home for, you know, the rest of your life. Um, you know, it's small things like that add up. It's, you know, conversations around charitable giving, right? Am I a giver? And you say, hey, you know what? I'm a penny pincher. Um, <laughs> I, I've had conversations with people where they say, you know, I thought I knew this person. We got married and I, we went to church together and I tied and my per and their eyes almost, you know, came out of their head. <laughs> <laughs> right. They were like, yeah. what are you doing? And, and, you know, and they, they had never had that conversation. Right. You know, and um, you need to have those conversations, right. It's, you know, so would this gonna- be, so would this be a red flag if, uh, if I was talking to a girl and she said, and I, and I said what you said, we need to have some, you know, talk about finances. And she said, well, I'm not going to talk about it until you buy me a Chanel purse. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be a red flag? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, in your mind, that should tell you, you know, she values <laughs> Chanel purses, right? right? And you may be the guy that says, hey, I don't value that. Right. We, we might not be a match. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, but uh, this is probably makes sense before an engagement. Yeah, absolutely. I would say mm-hmm. before you get engaged, you definitely need to have these conversations. You don't want to be too far down the line and start having these conversations. You don't want to be at the altar and say, Hey, you know, the night before we should, we should talk about a few things. Right. And um, it could so, be as much as somebody spending $500 a month at Starbucks or something. Right. Absolutely. Small things like that. Add you up, know. There, right. Yeah, small things like that add up. And then, you know, once they have these conversations in the book, I teach them, you know, how to bank as a couple, you know, how to integrate finances together, right? It's, it's a, you know, how to pay taxes as a couple, right? Because it's different, right? When you are mm-hmm. married, there are certain advantages or, or differences that come with how you, you know, do your taxes. Um, you know, the banking thing is, was a big thing for a lot of people that I've met with, Tom. It was you know, I've all, I'm used to having my, my checking account managing my finances and somebody else is used to having their checking account and managing their finances. And, you know, how do we bring that together? And so I'll talk about that in the book, you know, 
there's do you have do you maintain two separate checking accounts do you have three checking accounts well, or do you how have do you, one well if you're combining everything i i, I don't know if you're, that's what you suggest or not but how do you surprise somebody and how do you buy something as a gift and and not let them know about it till till the surprise <laughs> how does all that work so there's a couple of uh, things i look at there you know uh, that conversation that that question comes up a lot but in reality, Tom, what happens now, I'll, I'll answer your question. One is withdraw money, withdraw cash right now. Uh, you didn't, you didn't use the card. So they don't know exactly that you just ordered something from Amazon <laughs> um, <laughs> or you have a buddy or somebody do it for you. You say, Hey, you know what? I'm withdrawing this cash. And you know, when you order that and here's the cash, right? Uh, so you still okay. can, you still can surprise them. But in reality, Tom, what happens is, you know, you think that's going to be an issue. But when you combine accounts, you're creating a more trust, right? It's, mm -hmm. re it's really about transparency. And naturally, one person is more inclined to handle finances than the other. But if, they, if your spouse knows that, you know what, everything's transparent and I can look anytime I want to, they're not going to look all the time. You see what I'm saying? There? I see. I see. Absolutely. So I mean, that's, they that's might what start happened. looking, but the, the month before their birthday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't withdraw enough cash, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, these are really important, and I'm sure you've seen some disasters that when people that didn't do this, right? Absolutely. You know, um, I always tell people that you know, marriage comes with a lot of challenges and if finances and tension that comes from financial challenges doesn't have to be one then you know avoid it at all costs right you know there was there have been studies um there were gallup polls that the number one reason for many people's divorces is financially related mm -hmm. yeah yeah wow yeah. yeah and then uh and then the lawyers get rich when you start fighting it out you know uh, at the divorce uh, you got to chop the dog in half so each you know each person gets one half you know it's a, it's something i never well when people ask me if i've ever been married uh, you know my answer is great i say i never made the same mistake once <laughs> <laughs> so i'm not anti-marriage but i think it happened because i had my nightclub and uh, for six years and i would see people come in and, and meet at the nightclub and they disappear for a year or two and then, so they went off and got married and then they'd come back separately and be crying in their beer about their lousy marriage and their divorce back in the <laughs> yeah. nightclub. And I said, wait a minute. And then the statistics are not great in the, in the field of marriage, right? I mean, they, what, more than half people get divorced. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, like I said, there's enough challenges in marriage that you need to deal with. And, and, you know, if you can alleviate the money issue, then, you know, you're, much further ahead than a lot of other people. Did you have much experience with pre uh, prenuptial agreements? You know, um, not an attorney, but what I but I do talk about that in a chapter in the book. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is, when when you get when you, you know, most people think of prenuptial agreements as some wealthy guy trying to, you know, hold on to his money from some gold digger, right? right? Mm -hmm. And but. You know, I give them an example in the book of you started your bit. Your grandmother had a business. She passed that down to your mother. And now your mother's passed it down to you. You're getting married to this joker, whoever he is. <laughs> and doesn't it make sense to protect your family business if that marriage doesn't work out? You know, it's small things like that. Those are those are real situations and circumstances people mm -hmm. need to think about. It's not always the, what you see on TV or, or read is small things like that is, hey, I'm just going to protect my financial interest in, in this family business that my grandmother started if you and I don't work out. Or let's think about this time you went to scholars, you had a scholarship to go to college, right. you worked hard. Um, you know, some people put themselves through college by working um, and somebody comes whoever this person is you're going to marry, they come to the relationship and they went to undergraduate and took out, you know, student loans. And then they decided they wanted a graduate degree and took out some more student loans. So now they come saddled with $200,000 of student loans 
and you come into it with zero mm-hmm. because, because you worked hard to, you know, work part time and get scholarships to pay through college. Um, you know, I don't think it's fair that you have an agreement in place saying if this marriage doesn't work out, you know, you leave with your student loans and I'll leave debt free. You know, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> so it seems like it, uh, it, uh, you got to be kind of gutsy to bring this stuff up because it seems it's it's not romantic. Put it that way to, to bring this stuff up. And a lot of people would say, oh, well, you're planning for your demise already. But the thing is, is if you don't, the demise, if the demise happens, it's way worse. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. Glad I never went through it. All right, let's uh, switch gears and talk about the folks that maybe should be planning. Uh, you don't wait till the two weeks before you uh, retire to start planning, right? <laughs> no, you better not, right? Uh <laughs> <laughs> or you have to be picking which bridge you want to live under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so let's, uh, let's start. Uh, what are some of the things people should be doing um, that, and when should they start? Start as soon as possible. Um, you know, I, I, the first thing, if I'm counseling young people, I tell them, you know, as soon as you start making income, pay yourself first. And then I have to explain to them what pay yourself first means, Tom, because they get, they get excited sometimes and they say, well, pay myself first means that I can take the first part of my paycheck and I can go shopping or I can go. (laughs) And I was like, no, 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 that's not what I mean. Pay yourself first means put something in an investment account that's going to grow for you and create wealth for you over time. Um, And I show them and teach them how to do that. Uh, So definitely start as soon as you start getting income, start paying yourself first. You know, the secret to um, investing is time, right? Time invested is uh, the biggest um, indicator of, you know, how much wealth you're going to end up with. So time is, if time's on your side, um, you know, definitely start as early as possible. You can start later, but you have to make sure, you know, now that you have less time, now you need more money to Mm -hmm. uh, get where you need to be. So do you believe in the 401k stuff or what's the other, the IRAs? What's uh, what's the difference between those two? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you you know, you can have both, um, you know, typically your 401k or 403b, if you're in a nonprofit, it's going to be through your employer. And w- the way that works is it goes in um, pre-tax. And what mm-hmm. pre-tax means is, you know, if you make $50,000 a year, and you decide I'm going to put $5,000 into my 401k, that means, you know, you only pay taxes on Mm $45,000. So that that $5,000 goes in pre-tax, it's tax deferred until you take it out. So um, definitely a benefit there, you know, um, can save you some tax money in in the interest, especially if you're in a higher interest or a higher tax bracket now, uh, not having to pay taxes on that money until you retire, where potentially you you know, your income should be much lower in retirement. Um, so you should be in a lower tax bracket. So that's a win for you. All right. But wait a minute. Uh, if you made 50000 a year, don't you come out with nothing after the armed IRS agents that are coming around? <laughs> if I come after <laughs> <laughs> the 87,000 of them are coming into to my house <laughs> tomorrow. Well, <laughs> it, it kind of depends on what you've taken, Tom. <laughs> so... <laughs> so uh, okay, but what's the IRA then? So an IRA is um, an indi- individual retirement arrangement. Some people say individual retirement account. And it's typically for someone who um, may not have a, an employer or maybe self-employed where they can still um, retire or actually invest on a pre-tax basis if they're going into a traditional IRA. Now, what I typically tell individuals, if you make enough income is, Go into your 401k, put as much in as possible. And the reason you want to do this is many times employers will match what you Mm -hmm. put in up to a certain percentage. So, and it might be dollar for dollar. So if you put, you know, 3% of your salary, they'll put 3% of your Mm -hmm. salary. And you always want to put in as much as your employer will match. And then if you have any excess, then you can go over to the IRA and invest in, in that, in that particular account. So that's, you know, typically how I advise people. So what's, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, Mr. Roth? <laughs> I mean, <isn't> that what, <laughs> Roth IRA, is that different than, or is that just a generic name or what is that? 
So a Roth IRA is a IRA that's considered when you put money in on a post-tax basis, oh. which, mean, which means you don't get an immediate tax break right then. But when you take it out, it comes out tax free. So you start to think about it. You say, OK, well, what is my current situation? What's my current tax bracket? Do I want the immediate tax relief or do I want to get tax free money whenever it comes out? So that's kind of the difference okay. between the traditional and the Roth. All right. Now, on TV, you know, I work out of my home, of course, so I, the TV's on a lot. And I, I see these commercials come on and say, get this gold and put it in your IRA. What is that scam? What, what is that all about? <laughs> um, you know. The gold may not uh, even exist. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> You know, these days, Tom, you can you can invest gold or silver in your IRA. You can do real estate in your IRA. It's it's Bitcoin a number of things. Stuff too. It, you know, it's getting to a point where um, there's a few firms where you will be able to do Bitcoin as oh, well. My goodness, yeah. um, you know, so it's so all that, smoke and mirrors to me. And you know, people bug me all the time. Buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. And I said, no, heck no. You buy bullets. Because if, yeah. if you have bullets, you can get all the gold you want. <laughs> and Tom, if you think about it, if you get the gold, you're going to need the bullets, right? Right, now. you need the bullets anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we're back. We're still on people planning for retirement. So they need to start as early as possible. But what kind of mistakes are people making when it comes to retirement? The One of the um, mistakes I see people make is, one, they start too late. Um, but also they, they don't, um, inf or save enough, right. So they don't, you know, um, get the entire match, which you, uh, you know, I tell everyone get the match if there is one mm -hmm. and third, um, you know, they don't asset, they don't invest properly. They don't diversify. And what I see too often is someone to say, okay, well, I'm going to save, but I'm going to. I'm risk adverse, meaning I want to avoid risk. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to put all my money in a money market. That does you no good, right? You know, your money markets are paying less than 1%. You so, owe them money for holding on to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you have to be diversified. You know, um, some money can you go into a money market, but you need to allocate some money to stocks and some money to bonds as well. So um, asset allocation plays a, a big part in now, do you sit um, the, there and watch the stock reports every day and like, uh, uh, you know, f grief? Oh, it's down today. Oh, it's up today. Hey, is that the way it is when you're in the stocks? You can, you know, for some people. Um, so there's two types of investors. I think uh, one are what I consider passive investors. They're somebody that's going to say, hey, you know, I'm going to buy. I'm going to give you an example. I S and P 500 fund, and I'm going to put my money in there. And I'm going to just going to roll with the punches and whatever the market does over 20 or 30 years is I'm just going to live with it. Now, people who like that, they don't watch the stocks every day. They know that over a 30 year period of time, um, the S&P is going to return 10% annually compounded and they're going to be fine. Uh, but for people who who are opportunistic and want to think they can beat the market, those are the people that you know, watch it every day, right? Is there a signal that <laughs> I'm going to be able to take advantage of that's going to get me, you know, the ability to, you know, All you beat have the to market. do is ask Nancy Pelosi. She knows what it's, which way it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so. I think that's called insider trading. Oh, She's is that right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think she'll, she'll skate on that. So diversify uh, is one thing. Now, I heard of a, a place recently, I can't remember the name of the site where it's a, it's almost like a mini stock market for small businesses. So you're investing in small businesses and uh, hoping that they, they don't tank on you and lose everything, but I can't remember the name of, or if it's really legit. All right. So you've written two books. You've got, uh, are you compatible? That's for the younger folks. And then you have um, another book or is that an e-course? The other one. The other book um, is the, the Keys to Retirement. Keys to Retirement, right, yeah. And, and that's really about, you know, the taking the steps. I'll take people A through Z through all the steps that you need to do to make sure you're going to be in a good spot for retirement. And, and then, you know, at, um, in the book, the, the key part is, you know, some people will go through the steps and then they'll get to the end and 
um, they'll still retire and make the you know wrong decision. I teach them how to draw down their money. Now it's like I retired and I need this money to live on. People are living longer. I need this money to live on for the next 20 years. How do I not go broke in retirement, right? How do I not run out of money? So um, I teach that in the book as well. Beautiful. So, uh, so you got some freebies for folks, right? I do. Um, got two free e-courses um, for individuals. For those who are, you know, um, engaged or, you know, preparing for marriage. Um, and those are at financeswithgreg.com forward slash compatible. If you want to take that free course, you know, it's definitely going to get you much further along the path of the conversations you need to have and the things you need to start thinking about. And for those who are um, interested in retirement, it's financeswithgreg.com forward slash retirement. And, you know, when I think about the, the keys to retirement, Tom, I think about there's two ways I would use this book. One, if I wanted to do it myself, this book would be an excellent resource. Or if I wanted to check up on my financial advisor uh -huh. <laughs> to, to make sure they are doing the things they're supposed to be doing, it would be an excellent resource as well. Yeah, yeah. And you're a certified, is it is it certified financial planner or professional? It's um, planner. Certified uh, financial planner. And that's that's a pretty high designation, right? Yeah, it says top of the food chain if you want to be a financial um, advisor or financial mm -hmm. planner. I've been it, you know, for over a decade of you know, more people and more people are starting to, uh, to get this certification, but um, they're a little wet behind the ears sometimes. Yeah. And I'm, I've been seasoned on it and uh, for a while, but um, it's definitely, um, if you're going to look for a financial advisor, um, I, I would make sure they have that certification. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. And, uh, and I was just thinking back when you were working at the bank, I said, I, I, I probably would get fired pretty soon because somebody say, hey, uh, I need a hundred bucks. And so I'd say, okay, here's 20 for you, 20 for me, 20 for you, 20 for me. I don't know if that, if that goes that well. Commission. Yeah, I'd, I'd work on commission. I, they wouldn't have to pay me a salary. But. Yeah, I hope you like stripes, Tom. No. <laughs> so how do people get a hold of you if they, if they want to ask you any questions or uh, you know, look into uh, working with you? Oh, definitely. Um, Financeswithgreg.com. From the homepage, you can do a couple of things. Um, there's actually a neat little tool there. You can send me a voicemail um, and I'll get your message and I'll reply. Um, but I also have um, a consulting offer there as well. You can just click on it and see if it's um, if it works for you. And if it does, then, you know, we can definitely do some one-on-one -on -one time and, uh, and we can see if we can get your questions answered. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thanks so much. Again, uh, I've got a beautiful family that he only has to lock them out of the room when... <laughs> When, when he's recording something but but they are beautiful i saw them on the cover of the magazine so uh thanks a lot for coming on greg hey thanks for having me tom awesome so uh, check out folks uh finances with greg.com slash compatible and then finance with greg finances with greg.com slash retirement for those uh two e-courses will really open your eyes uh on the things you, you need to be uh, preparing for. And, uh, and he's got uh, great, great books uh, too over there. So, so uh, we will catch you. Uh, you know, watch that money folks, build that money. So we'll catch you all in the next episode. That's what we're all about. Making money as an entrepreneur. All right. Catch you later. <laughs>